Hello everybody, uh, something complicated happened and I can't really explain all of it, but what I was going to do in the video that you're seeing right now was a little uh, introduction before I went and farmed for the baller side sword. And uh, I made this video because I kind of missed out on some things, uh, there were things that I neglected to mention. so. Uh, I have to go back over this because the audio quality got so messed up that it it's terrible. It, like, I actually have to go back and do this in post-commentary. This is only the first, like, five minutes or so. After that, it'll be okay. But, uh, for right now, I'm going to be talking in post-commentary. And what you're seeing right now is really just an explanation of some of the mistakes that I made. Um in going ahead and farming before I explain some stuff. So what we're gonna do in a minute is actually go in that church over there. And uh, the boulders that we were farming for the sword are in here, so what we had to do is go in here and usually there is a black knight over here. Huge enemy, hard to beat your first time. It's pretty difficult. Uh, I, I'm i sorry I can't show you the fight because I, I forgot about it when I was going to go farming before I did this. And there was an item over here that I went ahead and picked up. It's called the Firekeeper Soul. If I recall correctly, I'm going to open it up in a minute. But basically, what it does is um, it drops from every Firekeeper. And there are Firekeepers at every like significant bonfire and they kindle your SS flasks up to 10. It's an automatically kindled bonfire. So this is a dead firekeeper right here and she dropped a firekeeper soul. Now what that allows us to do is upgrade our SS flasks to plus one, plus two. I don't know how much it actually is, but every time you kill a firekeeper or you find a dead firekeeper, you will uh, get the Firekeeper Soul, which allows you to upgrade. And um, now when you look up there, you see a channeler. That guy is a douche. He buffs up a room full of those hollows in there. There's like a room in there with maybe 12 or so hollows. He gives them buffs. He makes them, I think, faster, stronger, all that. So what we're doing here is trying to take him out with our bow, because we can do that, before we go into that room. So that'll make the fight a lot easier. The channeler is not a respawning enemy, so doing this now would make it so that we don't have to face it when we actually go into that room over there. If we didn't kill him now, we would be in there and we would be presented in a tiny room with several hollows that are being buffed by that thing. In addition, to getting shot by soul arrows that he does. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot him. And as we shoot him, he does shoot uh, soul arrows at us, so we have to dodge those. And also, I wanna go ahead and apologize for the uh, frame rate of this video, because it looks like uh, the frame rate in, in the recording right now is pretty lackluster. Looks like I'm getting something like 24. It's pretty laggy, so I'm just gonna apologize for that. And I think it's not like that in the the uh, upcoming video I have in like two minutes after this little explanation. I think it's because I had Fraps set to record at 60 frames per second when uh, I actually can only record at 30. Number one, because Dark Souls is, is locked to 30 frames per second, and number two, YouTube only allows 30 frames per second. Funny thing about that, actually, YouTube is soon going to be allowing 60 frames per second videos on their servers, which is good and bad. It is good because uh, now my videos will look a lot better. It's bad because now I have to put more effort into rendering and uploading my videos, which is already bad enough. And it is good because you get to see videos that are a lot more beautiful, no longer 30 frames per second. And now we've got the channeler dead. We're all done there. And I'm not really sure what I do in the rest of this video, actually. 
probably just explaining some stuff. Uh, hmm. Well, I'm stumped. I don't really think there's anything that I even need to show you anymore, so I might just cut this out in a minute. Hello everybody, my name is John, and welcome back to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. So remember when I said I would get the Baller Swag Sword? Um, I didn't. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not because of any reason except that I'm lazy. I really do not want to go through all the farming that would get me the Baller Side Sword because it takes a lot. On my other character, I've gotten every single piece of Balder armor. I I got like six Titanite shards, and it took me, I think, upwards of two and a half hours to get the Balder Side Sword. So it really just takes a long time, and I decided to roll with the Uchi Katana because a lot of people like it, and I've never personally played with it, so I figured maybe it would be a fun experience to use the Uchi Katana since I went through all that trouble of killing the merchant anyway. And it did say I would show you how weapon upgrading works, so I'm gonna do that. You seem to be doing alright. Need anything forged? Uh I I was gonna say something, but now I forgot it. Let's just pretend that sentence didn't happen. Anyway. You can see in the top right corner, every upgrade requires both souls and an item called Titanite Shards. I actually did get six Titanite Shards. And, uh, you just, like, yes, that one took 200, and only one Titanite Shard. As you upgrade, it starts taking more Titanite Shards and more souls. So we're going to get to upgrade it up to an Uchi Katana plus four. When we get... When we get three more Titanite Shards, that's when we can um, upgrade it to a plus five. So what we're going to do now is take on the second half of the Ended Parish. You saw in the little pre-video video that I had to record, there was some stuff that you missed out on. Like the fight with the Black Knight in there. But there's not a lot I actually have to cover in this video. It's relatively easy to get through the Undead Parish, especially if you do the thing that I showed you with the uh, with the bow. If you don't kill that channeler, then you're gonna have a much harder time, I think. At least I did. The first time I played, I didn't think about that. I didn't even have a bow. So dealing that with that was a little difficult. I think that's actually what caused me to restart my first time. And those were the baldurs that I was farming. We will have to fight more of those. And wait, did we open up this shortcut? I don't think we did. I should probably show you this. This goes back to Firelink. Um, those elevators that we fell down earlier to get those items. Yeah. It actually has a use that takes us to the end of Parish. Very useful shortcut. Very useful. Uh, I figured I'd just show you me opening it up. And we can go rest by the bonfire to get 10 Estus flasks, which will help us out for the boss. Oh, and I forgot I was going to go human for this, so I could show you that. For some reason, I already have 4 humanity in the corner. I don't know how I got it, maybe messages or killing those um, NPCs. But first, let's go ahead and reverse hollowing. That's all that happens. And now it's glowing. So now anyone can uh, invade me if they would like. That is, once I get out of Firelink Shrine. Because Firelink Shrine is a safe area. But if anyone's around my level, and in the same area I'm in, and they use an item, a uh, cracked red eye orb, then... or just red eye orb. But if you're at my level, you won't have the red eye orb. They can invade me, and what we're going to do for the boss that we have to fight soon is summon somebody, be it the NPC summon or um, or somebody else. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to summon somebody because 9 times out of 10, 
when you try to summon somebody, it just says summoning failed. I don't know how good the net code is for Dark Souls, but at least my experience with it has been pretty negative. I rarely ever get a successful summon, and if I do, it probably won't be on camera, just because of how hard it is. We do have another baller up here. I'm just going to lure out, so we have more room to fight him. And I'm tempted to try to get a parry, but every time that happens, mm -mm. we are doing more damage now that we upgraded our Uchi Katana, which is really nice. And I'm considering, later on, upgrading it to a Lightning Uchi Katana. And you haven't really experienced that yet, but I I'll explain it later. Anyway, this is the room that the Channeler was in. With all the hollows. Yeah, you see how many there are? If you don't know basic Dark Souls combat, you are going to get screwed in this area. I'm sorry. If you don't read the messages that say try luring it out, you will not have a good time. And I, I'm not showing you the channeler buffs, but it's a lot harder with him there. And these guys are a little bit stronger. And the last thing you need is for them to be stronger. I'm just making sure that there's not any more in here. I don't recall if the hollows respawn after you kill them. But I know the channeler doesn't. And there are four different passageways here. And some of them give you items. And this one gives me a baller as well. I'm pretty sure there is an item back here. So we just may, may as well go ahead and explore before we take on the boss. The boss is right up some stairs over there. Yeah, we're doing very solid damage. I used to not kill him with a backstab when I was farming him, and now I do. I do wish I could have shown you the uh, Baller Side Sword, because it is my favorite sword. But uh, this will do. I, I am really enjoying the Uchi Katana. And doesn't this look so suspicious? That's because it is suspicious. It's a secret secret thing. Um, up these stairs is a douche. We're probably gonna end up killing him later, but we may as well go ahead and... Still human, are you? Then I am in love. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without I am Knight Lautrec of Karim. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Yes, very sorry. Your reward will have to wait. I have just been freed. Allow me some time. I am free. Now, I can get back to work. Suspicious, isn't he? Ouch. Yeah, be wary of Liar. He is not entirely friendly. He is kind of a schemer. He does something bad later on, and I'm not sure if we should let it happen or if we should stop. Stop him before he does. I'm not going to explain it yet. But we can stop him from meddling in our game if we'd like to. Anyway, let's go explore one of the other four paths over here. I don't recall which one is the boss. Uh, it's one of the stairs, I know that. I don't know what this message says. Treasure head. Yes! If I didn't know better, I would think this is an ambush, too. I mean, these look pretty suspicious. And that way is the boss way. I think, yep. So, the only way we haven't been is... Oh wait. No, we have been everywhere. That makes sense. Okay. I don't know what he's trying to... Hollow ahead. There is no illusory wall there. I do not know what he's talking about. Uh, what you're gonna see in a minute 
is an NPC summon. So Lair that we met back by the Dragon Bridge, uh, he will help us out. And they, he's kind of scattered throughout the game. He's not on every boss, but he can help you out with a lot of major ones like Ornstein and Smo, uh, the Gaping Vagina Monster, a lot of them. And he's he's pretty essential to this fight in my opinion. He makes it a lot easier. And I've never beaten this without Solaire. Uh, the first time that I played it, I actually did get a summon, a real summon, help me out with this, and they just slaughtered it. Uh, the last game that I beat these guys with, I did have Solaire, and he did a lot. So let's hope that this works, because I, I do have a lot of souls and a lot of humanity, and I don't want to lose that. So let's go ahead. These guys are not that hard. Well, I'm just going to show you the cutscene. See, you thought they were statues, but they're actually not. Um, I would like to provide you with a strategy for this boss, but there basically is none. Just like every other enemy in this game, avoid the attacks and hit it. Hit it in the back. You can get a weapon from its tail here, and it doesn't have an enormous amount of health. It's fairly easy to take down, and it, there will be a buddy of his. See, we just got its tail. There is a buddy of his that, uh, that helps him out. There is a second one, which is why we're trying to kill this one really quick here. Yep, 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 yep. That's the fire uh, that we just got hit with. That's his buddy. It's not that bad, but I'm gonna go get an Estus. Now the way that summons work in um, with real summons is that when you use your Estus, it heals them. However, with NPC summons, your Estuses do not do a thing. There is no way to heal your NPC summons. So, so Lair's dead, and there was nothing I could do about it. And the Bell Gargoyles are vanquished. And I did not get the gargoyle helm, that was disappointing. Every time that I've fought these guys before, I always get the little helmet that they drop. It, it looks pretty sweet for the uh, early game. You did it, you know what? I also did it. What weirds me out is that they've got statues of these gargoyles all over here, but there's only two of them that actually work. Seems like kind of an inconsistency to have some of them be statues and some of them not be. Maybe a fundamental design flaw in the Undead Parish. Imagine if they were all real gargoyles, then I wouldn't stand a chance. That would be like late game boss hard. Heck, that's basically the Four Kings. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna go ring the Bell of Awakening now. So that's pretty cool. Let's go do it. And then after that, we will meet another NPC. We'll probably head down to the bonfire, and then we will end the video. Yes, you did it, and so did I. It always makes you feel really cool when you do that. Then you realize that you still have three-fourths of the game left. Actually, maybe more. I'm not entirely sure what the optional area is, probably. And let's go talk to an NPC. I believe he's... Yep, he's right there. He's our guy. He, he's kind of standing really creepily. 
I don't know how somebody stands like that. It seems like your arms would get a little uncomfortable. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kareem, the pop. Thou art a friend. For thee, a warm welcome. Cometh thou to confess? Or to accuse? For indeed, your sin is my domain. Oswald of Kareem is a dark moon. That's one of the covenants that we can play as. And uh, I haven't. You're not welcome any time. It is only human to commit a sin. <laughs> I haven't entirely explained covenants yet, but basically there are three types of covenants there are co op covenants, there are invasion covenants. And then there's the other covenants, like Grave Lord, stuff like that. And uh, the Dark Moons are an invasion covenant, but unlike the Dark Wraiths, who just invade people all the time, the Dark Moons punish the Dark Wraiths. So if I were to invade somebody and kill them in an unfair way, they could use an item called a Indictment, and then the Dark Moons have to hunt me down so they are justice in a way. And this guy is basically selling indulgences. If you get indicted, you can come to this guy and you can buy him off. Greetings. I am pleased to see I'm just gonna go ahead and you can also abandon your current covenant. That's what you do to request absolution. There are a couple of useful items here. We could buy indictments if we wanted to. There's all kinds of stuff. But now we're gonna leave him, and we did learn his gesture, his shrug, so that's cool. Anyway, uh... You know what? I'm just gonna end the video here, actually. There's not really much to say from this point to when do I get to the next bonfire. So when we come back, we will be tackling a relatively easy area of the game, but then a boss who I hate with all my soul and I want I, I, I want him removed from the game. I I die on him every single time, and I guarantee you I will die on him in this playthrough. Not once, not twice, but several times. I'll probably have to make it into a montage. So, when we come back, we will be doing the lower Undead Bird. I think that's it. And we will be fighting Capra Demon. Good God. So, uh, it's been good. Oh God. Okay, okay. Detour. Detour. Um, we just gotta take down three boulders real quick. This might be a little difficult because usually you're not supposed to fight all three at once. Uh, this is actually genuinely scary. What I could do is run to the bonfire. Oh no, I have a better idea. I'm sorry guys, there is no wimping out in Dark Souls. Everything is fair game. Sorry, Baldurs. I'll miss you.